Sister Sharon, and today we are discussing why godly men do not wear earrings. My friends, this is an epidemic. This is like so just taken over the churches where we see men who confess that they are followers of Jesus Christ who are displaying, and let's let's call it what it is, my friends, for a man. I'm talking about, we're not talking about, my friends, any kind of man. We're talking about a God man. We're talking about a Moses, a David, a John the Baptist, an Elijah, an Elisha, because that's who these men want to be, so they say. <laughs> We're talking Jonah. We're talking about the spirit of Paul and Bartholomew and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're talking about God men. Real God men. My friends, they do not wear bling. Come on. It's not appropriate for a man. You say you a man of God and you got this big old thing in your ear. Walking around drawing attention to yourself. And let me tell you, my friends, because I'm going to give you the scriptures. You will find where men were in earrings. They were wearing them in the scriptures. But it was not a favorable it, it, favorable or positive thing. So what's happening, because we do not understand the spirit of suggestion and how... Our flesh is sneaky. See, 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 the flesh is sneaky, my friend. And when you put that big old earring in your ear, y'all ever see these young men, old men with these big old ear? You thinking, what in the world is what? Would always be wondering, what's wrong with him? Something wrong with him? The the thing that I immediately think of is that this is a person who has an identity crisis. Why else would a, a God man, I'm not talking any man here. Let me be very clear about this exhortation. And, and ladies, you need to hear what I'm saying to you because if you get hooked up with a man who claims he's a Christian, a follower of Jesus, but he's displaying this type of vanity, he is not a God man. Because a God man is godly. And his desire is to walk in the straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. But as I endeavor to enlighten us in this exhortation, instead, many men are nothing more than Pentecostal playboys. Oh, yes. They're letting you know, sister, when you walk up on him and he got his little diamond studs. And some of them, you got two earrings. You got two uh-uh. Listen, listen, the reason godly men do not do this is because it is effeminate. It is feminine, especially a man with diamonds. Ladies, wake up because some of you are attracted to this spirit. This is a effeminate, unmanly disposition. And it is, it is, the root is vanity. Let us not be deceived. It is vanity, my friend. So, so when you got that thing in your ear, brother, let me tell you what you are doing. You are bringing empowerment to your fallen nature, to your flesh man. And this is why so many men are having all types of affairs. Many men who are what we call on the down low homosexual. They sleeping with their wives and sleeping with men because that spirit of vanity is attached to that diamond stud in your ear. And oftentimes, my friend, when a man is doing this, I'm talking about in the church. I'm not talking about worldly men. They do what they do. But you supposed to be a man after God's heart? No. See, God is looking for the spirit of David. He's looking for Samson. He's looking for men of war, men who are fearless, men who will roll up their sleeves in the spirit and fight. Not a man who is trying to be seen and prissy. Come on, because you, 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 there ain't a man that could honestly say when you put that earring in your ear, you not thinking about how everybody looking at it. 
Vanity. Friends, you listen, you can't war and you cannot be masculine and assertive and be the alpha male you should be in the spirit of Christ. You worrying about somebody might knock you upside the head and, and, and knock the earring out. You ain't, you, you, your mind ain't on the fight. It's on, you know, I got to keep it right. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, shoot. Ooh, 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 man. I'm, ooh. That's what you're doing. Vanity. This fad of earrings in the church. Any pastor that allows this, he is apostate. I'm going to say it again. Any pastor that allows men in the pulpit, on the praise team, ushering in the pulpit. Some of them let these young preachers in the pulpit. If it's you, let me tell you straight to your face, my brother. You are apostate. You have fallen away from the great shepherd. You are worldly. You are carnal. You are vain. And you have a floodgate open over these young men that you will not bring correction. In fact, you know, I feel some kind of way with this on my ear. Let me put that down. So Sharon don't wear earrings anymore. It's vanity, friends let alone a man, but there was a time where women, this was a feminine thing for women, not men. And we will see it is associated with vanity, trends, fads. It has the I'm a player uh, 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 disposition attached, attached to it. Most men back in the day, I remember when I was a young girl, when you saw a man with an earring, you always thought he a pimp. <laughs> Look, he a pimp playboy. <laughs> That's a pimp. Oh, yeah. And they had this strut about them. They had this, you know, I'm, you know, like, I'm, I'm the man. This is worldly, my friends. And the Bible tells us in 2 John not to love the world nor the things that are in the world. That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible also tells us, my friend, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, that you, man of God, you pastors, we are to abstain from the very appearance of evil. And when you see a man who says that he is in Christ, walking around with a stud in his ear, that is a clue of what's really going on in you. The world is vanity, my friends. It is effeminate. It is unmanly. That's why a man of God, a godly man, will not wear earrings because he's a man. And he's a man after God's heart. And listen, Paul said to us very clear. He said, all things are lawful to me, but they are not appropriate for for me because he said I'm a man of God. And and listen friends, listen. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 32 verse 2 that after the children of Israel had come out of Egypt that they were they before uh Aaron built that golden calf that they started worshiping and partying while Moses was up on the mountain getting the 10 commandments, they down there having a party. Aaron, in chapter 32, verse 2 of Exodus, told the men to, to tear, to, to pull the earrings from the women and bring them so that they could do what? Or he could do what? Fashion that golden calf because they had come out of idolatry. And the piercing of ears came from Egypt, my friend. This is not something that God's chosen people had started doing. This came from Egypt, the world. The Bible also tells us, my friend, this is very, very interesting. In Exodus chapter 35, verse 22, the Bible tells us that when a person was going to move towards slavery and stay with their masters, the Bible says that they were to take a awe. A-W-E, and drive it through the ear of that person who would become a slave and stay with their slave master. So the piercing of the man's ear was a, it was a sign of bondage, of ownership, that their slave master owned that man. He has a master. And my friends, listen to me and hear me good. 
When you put that earring in, brother, your master is not Jesus Christ. It is the God of this present world. And that's why many of you cannot stop cheating on your wives. You cannot stop lusting for, for, for men. You, you're not going to tell your wife you're lusting for a man. But the reason is because you got another master who is manipulating your heart, manipulating your conscience. Because when you start putting all your bling on, young man or brother, you become now self-conscious. It's all about me. And, and this is antichrist. What we're trying to do, brothers and sisters, is move away from the flesh, crucify the flesh. We don't want to raise it up. We don't want to put ourselves in the position where we're constantly pampering unnecessarily for public display, drawing what? worship we want see see let's tell the truth brother the reason you got the earring in is because you want people to look at you and you want them to feel some kind of way about you and some of you you do it because it makes you feel some kind of way of being empowered and god is saying that's pseudo that's fake that ain't that ain't that ain't where your confidence is to come from it's it's to come from the cross it's to come from the fact that you have been redeemed by the shed blood of Jesus Christ my friend that's where your confidence comes from that when i pass through this physical body I am going to spend eternity with God. I don't need no house, car, land, or no diamond stud in my ear. I'm a man's man. I'm God's man. I don't need the trappings of this world. I don't need the, the fads and the trends. I'm a man of God. So, so the question on the floor, my friend, is who is your master? Because this, this is where the piercing of the ears emanated for a man. You become slave to your flesh. It's all about that flesh. And you will know, my friend, that the real reason you got that diamond stud in your ear, and oftentimes it ain't even real. It's, it's, some of it ain't even a zirconium. It's just glass. It ain't even zirconium. Because most of all can't afford real diamonds. We just perpetrating. <laughs> Come on, brothers. I'm bringing this exhortation to help us understand you've been hoodwinked. You've been tricked. Friends, you got, look, look, many of you, you got your foot in that trap, and the trap is called vanity. Because if it wasn't so, here's the challenge. Can you take it all off and henceforth walk like a man after God's heart? I'm a man's man. That's what God wants to hear from your heart. I don't need nothing to pr prop me up, prep. I'm God's man. Amen? Come on, brothers. You got to take all that effeminate stuff off because it's feminine. It's not manly. The Bible also tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, Paul said this. Listen to this, my friend, as I close this exhortation. And let me tell you something, my friends. Some of you parents, you have harmed your boys. You got your boys walking around with them earrings in their ear. They two, three years old. And that spirit of the world and lust and, and just carnality and arrogance. And you wonder why your son is so talk, always talking talking back, got some kind of attitude because he think he a stud because the spirit of vanity is right in his ear and you can't hear what the spirit say because you blocked by your master. You got your kid's ear blocked. Vanity. He that has an ear, let him hear. What they hear, how fine he is. What he hear, I know they looking at me. Yeah, got my, mm, mm. Really? Come on, warriors don't prep in the mirror, my brother. Warriors brush their teeth and comb in and go. They ain't all up in it trying. No, that's feminine. That's feminine. But here, as I close this exhortation, and let me remind y'all, I'm like Mama Sharon, because some of y'all that's on the channel, some of you close to my age, I'll be an elder soon. I'm about 10 years off, 50 in a minute. So I'm, I'm like big sister for some of y'all. I'm just letting you know. The enemy playing you for a fool. That's what he is. He playing you, brothers. Oh, yes. He got you. Let me give you this last scripture as I close this exhortation. Why 
godly men don't wear no earrings because it is also in alignment with 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, excuse me, verse 14. Paul said this, he said, does not nature itself teach that if a man has long hair, it is a shame to him. So Paul was saying men, manly men don't walk around with long hair. How much more is it unmanly for a man to walk around with diamonds glistening, bling, bling in his ear? It's nothing masculine. I speak to your shame today, my brother. I speak to your shame, mother and father, that's allowing your boys to put these earrings in their ear at 10 years old, 9 years old, and, and grow their hair. You look at the baby boys, you can't tell if it's a boy or girl because it's hair. You think it's cute. It ain't cute. It's ungodly. It's unmanly. And some of you need to take that razor to them baby boys' hair and make them look like who they are. Men. They're going to be. They're boys. And they should look like boys. And as they grow, you already put that spirit, that effeminate spirit on them, thinking it's cute for them to have his hair braided all down his back. That's foolishness, my friend. I said it's foolishness. Get them, get them boys to a barber shop, ASAP, and get those earrings out them babies' ears. It ain't cute. You setting them up. You got a noose on their neck. Vanity. Vanity. It's all vanity, my friends. So God bless you, my brothers. Study the scriptures that I have given to you. Earrings everywhere mentioned in the Bible, my friends. It's nothing good about men. Nothing. Especially where the Bible tells us in Exodus 35 how those slaves, that's how they identify, identify a slave man. Come on. And you cannot deny the facts. You know doggone well how it makes you feel when you put that earring in your ear. You have moved away from the straight and narrow path. And you are ego tripping. You are edging God out. E-G-O. Edging God out. And you have you on that throne. And God is saying, I need you. Humble yourself. Strip. Strip it off. Come on, men of God. Strip. If you're struggling with homosexuality, get those earrings out your ear. Settle down and begin to war for your soul. Repent from vanity, my brothers. Repent. Mothers, just letting your boys do this. Repent. Repent. Go to God and say, God, have mercy. It's time to stop the madness. The way is straight and very narrow. And Jesus said, phew shall find eternal life on that straight and narrow path. And I can assure you, if you are propping up that vanity, you on the wide road that leads to destruction. I, lo I love you, my friends. He that has an ear. And oftentimes you can't hear when you got vanity on your ear. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to us. I love you, my friends. God bless.